So welcome to the show today, uh, Rahul Pawar. Uh, he's the founder and CEO of the company AppSmart. And uh, we're here today to talk about the app MPMe. Uh, there was a real success uh, um, as they presented at uh, Medium uh, just uh, last week. Uh, so it's great to have you on the show and thanks for coming on. How's it going today? Great, great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's been really exciting since uh, since Medium, obviously, because we've gotten a decent amount of coverage and people are really excited about the application. And uh, I think it resonates really well with what people are looking to uh, experience from a music service. So, uh, so yeah, certainly exciting times ahead of us. So let's start with the, the, your background a little bit, just because uh, you have an, an interesting background in terms of uh, music as well. Uh, where did you start out? And then we can start talking about how the idea for the company came about. Sure, sure. Yes, actually, I've uh, I've been involved in mobile and music for uh, for almost depressingly long time. <laughs> um, I was part of the uh, founding team at uh, Shazam, which, of course, most people know as the uh, music recognition service. Uh, so back in about 2000 uh, was when I first sort of started looking at the space. Um, and obviously, Shazam has been a huge success in the in the mobile app space ever since the launch of the iPhone. Yeah. Uh, and after that, I sort of branched out to start my own mobile incubator uh, in AppSmart. So right. we set up shop in about 2009. We built uh, we built a team of uh, mobile specialists, and uh, we were basically ideating a bunch of uh, bunch of concepts across different verticals and surprisingly we ended up doing something in music again um, so that was the formation of MPME uh, and MPME is a uh, it's an interesting music streaming service in a, in a world full of music streaming services uh, what we're doing is, is something a little bit different, we're basically taking the broadcast radio streams that are available on the internet uh, publicly and adding a layer of discovery and recommendation on top of it um, so at the core of it, uh, it's, it's curated radio, so at the core of it what we do is we basically listen to uh, all the radio streams we can get hands on in real time and match that up with uh, what we know about you as a user. So whether that happens to be the songs that I listen to in my iTunes library, the likes I have on Facebook, or the sort of favorites or thumbs ups that I actually produce in the application itself. And so we use that to create a, a, a real time recommendation of what you should be listening to. Uh, most of our innovation is in the design, which uh, people seem to really like, and it's it's fairly novel and interesting. It's, uh, it's designed from the ground up for tablet devices. Um, and in the technology, because uh, our entire core system is completely real time. So, yeah. while you're looking at, uh, while you're using it, listening to a particular station, you can sort of just scroll over and see what's happening in real time across all the other stations we've recommended for you at that point. Yeah, and it's a very powerful platform because, uh, uh, you know, I remember from your presentation, uh, you, you showed the way in which people navigate online radio at the moment. And with an app, for example, like I have on my iPad uh, called Wonder Radio, it's, and there's several of these that aggregate uh, radio channels of all sorts. It can be news, it can be music. You can choose channels by uh, genre usually, but it's incredibly hard to find a radio station that's playing the music you like uh, when you want it. Uh, and also to discover radio stations that are sort of uh, in line with your tastes. Uh, so this is a, an awesome way to get into it because you can actually look at artists you like and then that connects you to radio stations that are likely to play those artists or that have played those artists in the past. Correct. I mean, that was basically the the premise around it. Because uh, personally, you know, I'm a big music enthusiast, as you can imagine. You have to be to be in the, this business. But uh, but uh, what was quite interesting for me was uh, looking at my music consumption habits. You know, of course, I have all the usuals. I have my Lost FM account. I used to have a Pandora account when it was available in the UK. I have my Spotify account. But uh, for the most part, uh, when it comes to laid back music listening, I tend to just sort of tune into the radio stations I know and love. Uh, my favorite radio station is actually this very, very small electronic music outfit out of San Francisco. Uh, but it took me it took me years to discover them. Uh, whereas right now, the first time I fired up MPME, it, it threw it straight back at me as my first recommendation and this is without me telling it anything else about me apart from the music I actually listen to. So uh, there's an enormous amount of content out there, it's curated by professionals, uh, there's, a, there's a sort of, there's a lot of passion that goes into it uh, and it's, it's, it's a really well engineered um, music discovery experience. Uh, however, as it currently stands, actually navigating the way as you describe through these lists and genre based navigations is a lot of work so I think most people end up just listening to the stations that they know so I know you know let's say six music over here or, or maybe absolute radio and that's kind of what I would listen to because it's too much effort for me to try and discover other stations that would be playing the kind of music I like yeah. so yeah. by leading with the content first I think we've actually looked at creating an experience that is a little bit different to anything else that's out there and from a technical standpoint uh 
uh, in terms of uh, you're talking about real-time monitoring of, of what the radios are doing it the because I'm not really very familiar with the, the world of uh, streaming radio and how it all works but uh, are that the metadata sets uh, in terms of uh, the tracks that are being played in the artists uh, provided by the radio themselves or are, have you developed a technology by which you monitor what they're playing and you manage to somehow shazam it and find out what the tracks are that they are, they are playing at, the, at any given time yeah, we actually monitor the the content of the streams itself. There's no sort of special integration with any radio stations. Oh, okay. So it's it's really cool. So it's 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 a very ad, very advanced, uh, you know, p- p- powerful system because you have to monitor hundreds of stations at the same time. So it's it's, it's not an easy task for sure. <laughs> correct, correct. But we're we're comfortable building things on scale. Yeah, uh, that's that's really awesome because, uh, uh, you know, it's it's a, a huge advantage for you guys on 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 anybody else that's working in this field for sure. Yeah, certainly. Uh, we've uh, we've obviously got quite a lot of experience actually doing these these sorts of uh, these sorts of real time infrastructures. So uh, we obviously play to our strengths. Yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, in terms of a uh, social media integration on the app, uh, I can see there's a, a Facebook integration built in so that you can uh, aggregate, of course, and, and the app can learn what you have shared on your Facebook account so far. Uh, have you got any other um, integrations in the pipeline? For example, uh, Last FM one would be an obvious one. Yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, we want to make sure that we've got a we've got a full range of uh, integrations across the various relevant uh, digital music products and platforms that are out there. Uh, Facebook is quite a big one for us because uh, we're looking at creating some shared broadcast experiences that we're planning on launching in the next uh, in in. Uh, well, before this this half of the year is out, uh, which would be quite interesting because the nice thing about broadcast is you can actually have a shared experience, and we think that would be really powerful when combined with the social graph. So our next version is going to have a, a much, much deeper social media integration. Yeah, sure. And uh, uh, in terms of uh, um, maybe uh, more personal radios, you know, there's a lot of people doing their own little radio station. There's channels like uh, Spreaker, for example, that are opening up... Uh, uh, opportunities for people to create their own uh, radio station. Uh, are you looking at uh, mostly commercial uh, radios for now, or are you are you starting to uh, look at how you can integrate um, more personal experiences, or you know, more very very independent experiences into into the application as well? Sure. For now, we focused on the commercial licensed. Uh Broadcasters, uh, because they're they're actually um, they are what I imagine most users uh, are currently familiar with, and they form the bulk of the radio listening habits for our end users. Uh, we are, of course, in in early discussions with things like live and uh, uh, live live streaming broadcasts. Um, and uh, the sort of new generation of uh, personal broadcasters to figure out how we can provide a, a meaningful experience for their users. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, uh, what what has the feedback been from from the radios themselves? Have you have you talked to them about uh, uh, what you're doing uh, and, and how are they seeing uh, your application in terms of uh, their their user base? Sure. Yeah, we've. Uh uh, because of a sort of fairly long heritage in the music industry, we've had the advantage of being able to have very high-level conversations with uh, with some really interesting people. Yeah. Uh, we are, however, a fairly small team, so we're working with the people who are closest to us. Yeah. And uh, in in London, for example, where we're based, we're working with um, we're working with uh, some very senior people at uh, one of the largest broadcasters in the UK to position our product and add value to uh, their customers and their business uh, in a meaningful way. So on the B2B side of things, we're actually looking at a suite of products uh, that help maximize the revenue on revenue for a radio station, yeah. help drive registered users, and help sort of create targeted advertising in a meaningful way for them. So uh, we're, we're, we're addressing a product differently for our end users versus our content partners, in this case, the radio stations. Oh, okay, that's great. That's great. And in terms of platform compatibility, uh, the, the, the app on the iPad is, is awesome and really slick but considering the amount of technology that you deploy in the company and it's something that really nobody else is doing uh, at this time uh, are you thinking of crossing over uh, to a, a br- in browser experience or to a mobile like a mobile phone experience yeah sure uh, it's uh, once again we're sort of relatively small team so we had to focus on uh, focus on the platform that was most meaningful for us uh, the volume product which is the iOS mobile application should be out relatively soon we're, we're expecting that somewhere in, in quarter two um, but uh, we're also looking at an Android device our pure web HTML5 slash proposition will probably be a little while coming 
uh, and we're still not decided about exactly how we will be positioning that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an awesome idea, and I would recommend anybody to go and check out uh, MPME on the App Store or for iPad and play with it. It's a free application, so, uh, you know, really go for it, and I think you're going to find some amazing recommendations on there. Great. Thank you very much.